Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I originally did anesthesia um, for, it's kind of a long story, I had chronic fatigue syndrome and it was very tiring for me to, to talk to patients, so I went into anesthesia because everyone's asleep. <laughs> and, um, and then I, actually they sent me to the Mayo Clinic, said let's find out what's wrong with you, they said oh, you're fine, nothing's wrong. So during that residency I found out, I started looking at my hormones and I'm like, oh my god, I'm horrible. So I started on testosterone and growth hormone and thyroid, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And then so I went into, got out of that, went into family practice, and then started doing uh, uh, the hormones. Uh, my background originally was laboratory science. I was a medical technologist. Uh, when I went through medical school, I was determined I was going to be a pathologist, farthest away from, uh, from uh, uh, any kind of patient care. Uh, <laughs> during medical school in, in Texas, I, I'm an osteopath. Uh, I, I fell in love with talking to patients and coming home. It just made me feel really alive at night. So I tweaked it around 180 degrees. Um, and my wife um, got chronic fatigue syndrome after a ski trip to Lake Tahoe. She caught a virus, um, uh, went from being real healthy to uh, flu-like symptoms for years. Uh, it sent me off on a uh, lifelong journey of trying to figure out what to do to treat this. And uh, because of that, I'm working with these fine doctors, uh, opening a clinic in Fort Worth. And uh, we're going to be focusing on hormone balancing as well as chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. My background is that I went to pharmacy school first, and then to medical school, and then I did emergency medicine for 30 years. About a year ago, I was injured and couldn't do that anymore. And for years, I've been interested in anti-aging medicine. I was talking to my family physician, who was a friend of Dr. Holtorf's, and he said, you might want to go talk to him. Um, he needs uh, help in his office. Um, and so we met, and I became fascinated with all the things that he has been doing. And I've been very impressed uh, with the patients that have been coming in and, and making them feel better a lot of the time. And it's been very gratifying and rewarding, and I'm very excited about it. My history, um, I'm from California. Best, best. I went to medical school at Penn State, which is a great place, but it's very cold. Um, and I was, uh, medical school was fascinating. It was like one of the most intriguing times of my life, but you realize that you're getting kind of a skewed view of medicine. So I would, but you, you have to study medicine. You gotta, and it's, it's good medicine, but it's skewed view. Even in the beginning of medical school, they tell you, you know, 50% of what you learn is going to be obsolete by time you leave, by time you leave school. So with a healthy skepticism in mind, I always uh, study, study hard. At eight o'clock, my allopathic studies stop and my naturopathic and uh, alternative studies would commence. And that way I helped always maintain a, a balance uh, going through medical school. After medical school, I did a general practitioner uh, training, and then uh, I was very lucky to train with Dr. Weil, Andrew Weil in Arizona. And that was uh, a fascinating experience. I uh, got to meet some excellent people. And um, from there, you know, one thing leads to another. Um, I'll, Integrative medicine, hormone medicine, longevity medicine, they're all part of the same vein, which is trying to get people as healthy as possible in the, safe, uh, the safest way. Mm -hmm. Typically, yeah. If it's a PPO, HMOs typically not, but PPOs typically will cover a significant portion. Actually, they're used yeah, in conjunction, definitely, they're, they're much better. I mean, look at progestins. I mean, it's going to kill the baby, typically. Progesterone allows the baby to, to grow. So typically, they're, they are used in conjunction with fertility. Yeah. There's other things, you know, with regards to fertility, we'll see plenty of patients who, um, even younger patients, um, frustrated, maybe they go to the re reproductive endocrinologist and, uh, and it's typical where someone says you know let's give it a few times but we've often found that people with low cortisol low normal thyroid levels low progesterone levels have trouble getting pregnant when you re uh, check those all we check those in the blood and reverse those and frequently the patients get uh, pregnant I think that's my experience and every everyone's experience yeah, up here. I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just comment on that. We, yeah, we do have so many women come in because they couldn't get pregnant. They did in vitro numerous times, fix the hormones, and they get pregnant naturally. 
So that happens very often. Um, some women, like when you give them growth hormone, they're menopausal, they'll start menstruating again. Some like it, some don't, but it's very, uh, it's very anti-aging, so kind of anti-ages the uh, body. Because the body <laughs> hormones do not take over the system. You know, the birth control pill is basically making your body think it's pregnant. So the body hormones do not do that, so no, they do not work as, as birth control. Yeah. Now, now they're estrogen modulators, but they are very, very weak. So they, they're phytoestrogens, they go to the receptor, barely touch, they do block out some estrogen. So you can actually use it for high estrogen or for low estrogen. But typically, you go on the bioidentical, go off of those, there's no, you don't have to wait. All right, so uh, she's complaining that she's on bioidentical hormones and numerous doctors have not told her, given her direction. And a large portion of her patients come in on bioidentical hormones. They're like, oh, that doesn't work for me. And you really, that's the thing. They don't know about bioidentical hormones. And you're probably on 80% estriol. It's, you, you, uh, the ratio is probably not, not right for you. So that's the thing they need to know and about you know, how to adjust doses, but they don't. And that's, that's the problem. Yeah, again, with, with natural hormones, that you can test levels, but the thing with natural hormones, they go into the blood and then into the cells. So if you're chasing levels, often you can be also thrown off. And so really it's symptoms. When you know the symptom, it, it's, it's very clear 99% of the time what you need to do. Yeah, so we just give you direction, just go, okay, well, what do you feel? We ask you a number of questions and, and adjust based on that. We can do blood levels if we don't know where we are, but it's very rare. Just briefly, when someone thinks, do they have a problem with estrogen? Well, if their estrogen is low, they'll have certain symptoms, so you can think whether this pertains to you. Low estrogen, you have hot flashes, night sweats, dry skin, dry eyes, maybe pain during intercourse, depression, <laughs> which doesn't sound very fun to have uh, low estrogen. So next, flip side, too much estrogen, you feel bloated, you feel pregnant, water retaining, breast tenderness. So the key with all these hormones and this way we spend all day doing is balancing someone's hormones. If it's lower, you don't want too low, you don't want too high, you want right in the middle. And uh, work with the patients together to get with the you know, patients and our advice, we can basically find out what are the same levels. Same thing with progesterone. If your progesterone is too low, you can have symptoms of excess estrogen, which are bad PMS symptoms, uh, fatigue, um, anxiety, and then when you correct it with the progesterone, those symptoms go away. So that's, um, that's just a little bit more information. And then uh, I don't know if you mentioned the website that they can always find out more information on. So the website is the Hormone and Longevity Medical Center dot com. Hormone and Longevity Center dot com. Also, um, the for chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, um, along with that site, also the fibro and fatigue dot com is uh, the website for the fibro treatment, chronic fatigue. And that's, that's a whole other lecture, but um, the, I've, about 99% of people with type 2 diabetes have low thyroid and low testosterone. The problem is the low thyroid does not pick the